the most well known, if not the most well known, of the Norse goddesses must surely be Freya. She is a mistress of magic, particularly the kind of magic known as Sælda, and she claims half the battle dead. She is known as a goddess of love and of lovers, and artwork often depicts her as overtly sexual and very beautiful. Yet, who is Freya, really? What do we find when we dig under the veneer of popular culture and Victorian stories? Was Odin really her husband? Is she the goddess of love that modern depictions make her out to be? How similar is the magic she practices to the witchcraft of today? Her name is derived from an old Norse word for lady or woman, which is both indicative of her nature as a preeminent goddess and also a source of confusion because it exists as a general term or title. If Freya ever had a distinct personal name, it has been lost to time. A modern word related to Freya's name is the German Frau, woman or wife, which shares the same root. Adding to this confusion, Freya and Husfreya were used as terms for human women in different contexts usually ways that would be translated as lady now. While this shows her wider importance in the culture, it also makes her deeper nature more mysterious and harder to gain insight into by looking just at the meaning of her name, or title as the case may be. Unlike Odin, Thor and Freya, we have no surviving temples or large statues to Freya but she appears frequently in myths and her popularity is genuinely unquestioned. There are many place names across Norway and Sweden that translate to something like Freya's Shrine or Temple, showing that even though the actual buildings and evidence for them may not have survived, they likely did once exist. Bellows describes her as the fairest of the goddesses and the most kindly disposed to mankind especially to lovers. There is also an intriguing passage in the Prose Edda, where we are told that Freya goes to great lengths to aid one of her devotees, because he has made so many offerings to her that her altar shines like glass, showing us that such a practice was known and that she was thought to be swayed by devotion. Her contemporary popularity during the pre-Christian period can also be seen in a law case found in the Saga of the Icelanders, which relates to the story of a man outlawed for blasphemy after reciting a poem at the Althingi, where he declared Freya to be a bitch. Freya appears often in the Norse Eddas, both in an active role and also as a point of contention. In several stories, giants try to force the Aesir to relinquish the sun, moon, and Freya as prizes in various contests, and in at least one account, a giant stole Thor's famous hammer, Mjolnir, and would only return it in exchange for Freya's hand in marriage. This demonstrates the pivotal importance of Freya in a wider cosmological sense, although the exact context of that importance has been muddied by time. Freya's myths and stories can be found across over a thousand years of written and oral material from the end of the first millennia through the modern day. Although she is described as a goddess who came from outside the Aesir, the Norse gods, she is nonetheless one of, perhaps the most pivotal of the Norse goddesses, and quite possibly the most well known today. Freya's importance in the historic culture rests on three things associated with her. Ongoing abundance, sexual availability, and fertility. These would have all been greatly desirable qualities which were embodied in the goddess and perhaps available to those who called on her. She is often associated with women and women's issues, but it would be more accurate to describe her as a domestic goddess, not of marriage as an institution, but of the home and all that was necessary to keep it flourishing, and her devotees would include all people rather than any specific gender. In Norse mythology, there are two groups of gods, the Aesir and the Volnir, who were once rivals but eventually joined together at least to some degree. Freya is one of the Volnic deities and joined the Aesir along with her father and brother 
after the war between the Volnir and the Aesir ended. She is in fact the only clearly named Volnik goddess. While the Aesir are the most well known and often spoken of gods of the Norse, the Volnir were a secondary group of gods that were also acknowledged, possibly originally as a separate religious cult and whose mythology eventually intertwined with the more well-known Aesir. Several scholars suggest that the war between the Aesir and the Volnir may represent the memory of an older rivalry between different cult groups or pantheons which saw their followers initially clashing before merging. Others reject the idea that the events are pseudo-historical and instead see them entirely as mythic in nature representing the battle between the agrarian Volnir and the warlike Aesir, or between the Volnir as symbols of nature and the Aesir as civilization. And of course, some choose to simply take the story for what it is, the tale of two groups of gods interacting. The Volnir are widely viewed as deities of fertility and beings who are more strongly connected to the natural world. Njord is a deity with sway over the harbour, Freya over crops and weather, and Freya may represent a principle of propagation or reproduction. The Volnir are gods associated with good weather, sunshine, rain, helpful winds, successful harvest, and favourable seas, all purviews that pertain to fertility and would be appealing to followers who relied on these things to survive. Their use of female-directed Seda and acceptance of incest could indicate a matrilineal cult and that along with the wider emphasis on fertility could indicate a social divide between Volnik worshippers as farmers and Aesir worshippers as initially nobility. The two main hallmarks of Freya's historic worship were likely centred on domestic success i.e. marriage and childbirth and Seda the first remaining acceptable into the Christian period, while the second was vilified. Despite her origins among the Volnir, she is listed by Snorri Stuklusnan as one of the Arshinnir, the goddesses of the Aesir, and has a prominent place in Norse mythology. While traces of her worship can be hard to discern beyond place names connected to her, we have a reference in the poetic Edda, Odruna Dradda, to Freya being invoked in a prayer, along with Frigga and the Vedia, after a successful birth, and in Hevar's saga or Kevales, to Freya being prayed to for success in brewing. Freya is not known to be connected to explicit ritual practices, although the Norwegian Historia Norvegiae discusses a Swedish practice of sacrificing kings to Sierres for successful harvests and suggests that Sierras in this case should be interpreted in context as Freya. It is possible that some of this scarcity of evidence is due to Freya's outsider status once Christianity took over, where she was often reviled for her sexual openness by the new religion which chose to transfer Freya's previous associations to the Virgin Mary. Despite that, we do have ample evidence of Freya's position and popularity among the pre-Christian peoples of Northern Europe and she has continued to be honoured in modern times by those drawn to her various abilities and qualities. If you would like to learn far more about Freya, then please take a look at our book Freya Meeting the Norse Goddess of Magic by Morgan Daimler who also provided the words for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for weekly content, and we'll see you next time.